Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies. Thank you so much, Irina and Bonita, for that lovely introduction. Uh, again, my name is Shanika Marie Davis, and I want to welcome you to our first ever, ever virtual conference. I am thrilled to be serving as your MC for the day. I cannot wait to be coming her. We have so much to offer you ladies and gentlemen today. You will be stoked, surprised. We have amazing guest speakers. We have a lot to offer you all today. And so, but before we move forward, I like to just do a little bit of housekeeping uh, rules with you guys, just to give you a flow of today's program. During the conference, you will see the presenter. The presenter will not see you. So the presentations that we will be sharing with you all today is more like a webinar. I am going to ask that you please stay on mute unless you are invited to the platform to ask a question. And to let us know if you have a question, I need you to look in your swag box. There is a sign that says, I am becoming her. If you lift this up when you have a question, it'll prompt us to know that you have a question. And I will be monitor, monitor, excuse me, monitoring our chat box. <clears throat> if your question is selected, you will be prompted to um, come into the stage. We'll have someone bring you to our stage and you will be unmuted. <clears throat> during, <clears throat> excuse me, during the lunch, you can go to any virtual table and chat with your friends and network. And I have to say, I got on this morning and it was, it was super fun. So break out, go meet other people, introduce yourselves. And then each table will have a host. And what you can do is just click on the table and again, chat with the host. At any time during the conference, you may go shopping in the green room. On the left of the screen, you should see a green room box and you will click on that. In addition to that, during our time, if our speakers, uh, if you have questions and the speakers are not able to answer your questions, you will be able to uh, go to the green room and have a conversation with the speaker. Now, I am so excited. I would love to share with you guys a swag box. I know some of you ladies were swag box, and I've already received from my ladies who received the swag box, how they are so thrilled with all the goodies that were in there. Ladies, we have multiple things in this swag box. We have some snacks for you guys. Um, we have magnets, we have a carrying bag, and I, I can't leave this out, y'all. We do have sparkling, uh, sparkling champagne. So with that said, ladies, enjoy your swag box. And in addition to that, um, we also are going to be having music played by DJ Severe, who is known as a sneakerhead with a solid game. His clients have included Bruno Mars, Britney Spears, and Michael Jordan. In addition to 12 years being the Los Angeles Dodgers official DJ, he soon will premiere his record label, Rose City Sound. DJ Severe will rock us today. Trust me, we will be partying here, ladies, as well as providing you guys with vital information. So get ready, relax, whether you're at home or at work, make sure you have your tea, your water, just, just, just relax with this. You'll, you'll, this will be more than what you have ever imagined before. Before we dive into our program, however, we are going to begin with the prayer. It's going to be provided by Tina Calderon, who is the Tungva and Chumash Southern California Tribal Elder. Tina is a singer, dancer, and cultural speaker who enjoys sharing her cultural knowledge and experiences with our local community. Please join me and welcome Tina Calderon. 
Hello, Shanika. Thank you for that introduction. I would like to say good morning to all of you. Uh, I say this in my tribal language to honor my ancestors, but what I am saying is I am Tina Calderon from the Gabrielino Tongva and the Ventureño Chumash Nations. And if you're not familiar with those tribes, what you should know at least is the Tongva are the original caretakers of the area of Pasadena. And we had villages throughout San Fernando Valley, the whole LA Basin and parts of Orange County and San Bernardino County, as well as the four Southern Channel Islands. And in spite of four, um, four different genocides throughout our history, we are still here. And I thank you for inviting me to be here to open this up in a good way. And the first thing that I would like to do is offer a song. And this is called Strong Woman Rising. It's in my Trumash language. Um, and we sing it in ceremony normally to celebrate the accomplishments of our beautiful women. Um, but this can be sung for women and men as well, just to encourage you to follow your dreams. So I'm gonna offer this song for you. Hey, oh, hey, oh. There's no limitations. And I'd like to share with you a little bit too um, that there's several prophecies, Native American prophecies that are coming to fruition at this time. One is that women will take their rightful place in government once again and help to lead the nation. And this is happening right now. We have more women in government and high seats and council place, council women than ever before. And so again, we need you all to step up to help us to make these changes. We can all do this together. Another um, prophecy is that the condor of the south is going to reconnect with the eagle of the north. And in that, we will revive our indigenous teachings and indigenous teachings from across the world that teach us about respect and reciprocity. That's well needed in this day and age. We're living in some crazy times, but it's time for change and it could be change in a good way. 
The final prophecy that I'll share with you today is um, that traditional plant medicine and traditional teachings of health and care are going to be coming back strongly. And along with that comes a teaching that we all have the ability to heal ourselves. So that's not to say that you don't go to doctors. We do need to do that. But once we know that we have a deficiency or an illness, it's so important for us to start putting the right foods in our body to help our body to heal. And along with that comes the natural plant medicines that our creator put on this earth for us to utilize. Those teachings are going to be coming back. And then to be able to meditate and focus on your illness so that it will go away. This is very strong. You can do this. No one needs to suffer with these illnesses. So with that, I want to ask for blessings for each and every one of you. Let those blessings trickle out to your families, your loved ones, your communities. And I say, I thank you for having me here with you. And also, may you all go well. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much, Tina Calderon, for your presentation. It was beautiful. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a dynamic mother and son duo, Elizabeth Ellis and Jairus Ellis. Elizabeth, Elizabeth began dancing at the age of 10 and has not stopped dancing ever since y'all. Prior to COVID-19, she taught dance and stretch exercise classes. As for uh, Jairus Ellis, he was inspired by uh, the rehabilitation of a torn hamstring while training for the Olympics. Jairus became a trainer to help others realize their athletic dreams. Elizabeth and Jairus will lead us in a dance exercise so we can move our bodies. Listen, y'all, a lot of us are at the computers 24 seven from Zoom to conferences to webinars, and we need to make sure that we are taking care of our mental and physical health. So we need to get up and move our bodies. With that said, I would like for us to get up from our computers, wherever you are at work and wherever you are in your home, make sure you have, you don't want nobody to get hurt. Um, and let's welcome Elizabeth and Jairus. With that said, we're going to take just a, a quick uh, stretch on our own then until we get Elizabeth and Jairus on the scene. So DJ, can you play my favorite song? While we're all waiting to get warmed up with Elizabeth and Jairus, I just encourage us to just get down where you at. Hey! Move those 
Ladies, let's move it. How many times we get to party at 10 in the morning? Not too many. <laughs> okay. We're going to move forward now. Thank you, DJ Severe. So, with that said, we will bring Elizabeth and Jairus back as a little bit later. Next, we have a Power of Breathwork workshop led by Irina Melkumian, who is the director of the Young Women's Commission, and Mr. Anton Wisbisky. Ms. Irina Malkumian is a relationship manager with City National Bank's personal and business banking team with an emphasis on entertainment industry. She is fluent in both Armenian and Russian. Ms. Malkumian is very active in the community. Irina is on a mission to help as many people as she can to heal from traumas by using tools that help people cope with daily stressors. Now for Mr. Anton Wisbisky, he is the owner of a social media agency that focuses on helping spiritual leaders grow their brand. He is passionate about finding universal truths and sharing it with the world and believes we are all in control of our own destiny. Y'all, some of us have traumas and stressors that we need to deal with so that we can move forward because we are in control of our own destiny. Please welcome me. Help me in welcoming Irina Melkumia and Tan with Hi everybody. Hello everyone. I hope you all can hear me because this is going to be so important. I want to thank all of you first for taking the time to join us today in celebrating the, the SoCal Women's Conference 20th year anniversary. Usually if I'm on stage and I'm speaking, it's about banking because I want all of you to know the importance of having the right banker by your side. But today, that's not what I'm going to talk about, even though that's super important. Make sure you have the right banker in your life that's helping you with your financial needs. But ladies and gentlemen, I would not be the banker that I am. I would not be the person that I am if it wasn't for the tools that I have in my toolbox that I use every day. And given the current state of the world and all the pain and uncertainty, I wanted to come to all of you today with something that's going to help you feel better. Something that you can take away from this conference today and actually use it in your everyday life. And what is that tool? It's breath work. Yes, you heard it correctly. Breath work. Your breath works. Breath work is a specific breathing technique that when you use it for a certain amount of time, literally just in seven minutes, what happens is you tap into your um, limbic system, the back of your brain, where emotions and trauma and pain is stored. And when you do this unique breathing exercise, you're able to process those and release them so you feel more centered, you feel more at peace. And I wanted to bring that to you guys today. And the way I got into this is I started working at a really young age. My mom was a, she's a cancer survivor. But at the time when she was going through chemo and everything, I was really young and I didn't have many tools to help her. And I made it my mission to find tools such as meditation, nutrition, anything and everything that was going to help my mom feel better to process her emotions. And long forward to today, breathwork is the tool that helped her. It's a tool that has helped me. And I'm grateful to say I've used it with thousands of people to this day. And I've seen people change their lives just by breathing this, using this powerful breathing exercise. I know it sounds really crazy. How can your breath do that? How can your breath help you release emotions and feel better and get high without taking drugs? I'm not lying. You're about to experience it. And Anton, who's going to join me today, he's actually a breathwork coach as well, who's been doing this for years. 
So he'll tell you a little about his experience. We'll explain the breath and get right into it. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. We're super excited. And, you know, I believe our life, the energy or the states that we're in. And right now in the world, there's so much fear. There's so much uncertainty. But has there been moments in your life where you were in a good state or you were happy and something that would typically kind of piss you off didn't because of your energy, because of your state? Or what about when you were really upset? The smallest thing can make you even more upset and you get more upset and more frustrated. Well, what if there was a way to take control and take our powers back and not have to rely on external circumstances to make us feel good? If we could use the tools, you know, the God-given tools that we've been given to reopen up our power, to reclaim our strength, and that's what breathwork can do. You know, this technique, what it does for you is, like Irina said, it allows you to tap into the deepest parts of your brain and get you out of that thinking brain and into your limbic system, into deeper parts of yourself that thought were impossible to tap into by science. You know, we're not supposed to be able to take control of these autonomic functions, such as our limbic system, such as our heart rate, these things. But it's actually being scientifically proven that this breath work alkalizes your body, which if anyone knows, disease and illness can't live in an alkaline state. And it actually helps you return to balance, get out of fight or flight, get out of stress. And I mean, right now, more than ever, we need a tool like this. So a little bit, two seconds about me is when I was young, I had really bad anxiety and depression. And I went down the traditional route of, you know, getting a psychologist, getting put on, you know, medications and they helped, but they really just numbed me out. I had this uh, epiphany one day that I didn't want to have to rely on something external to dictate how I was feeling. I didn't like that. So I went down a, a crazy uh, road to find natural ways to heal, natural ways to feel better. And fast forward to today, the most powerful things hand down, hands down I found, which was, which was breath work. Now, breath work is kind of like, the, I, I like to describe it like this. Meditation has amazing benefits, but I don't know about you guys, but have you ever tried to meditate? And when you try, you just kind of go through your checklist of things you have to do they say we're supposed to silence our mind and all these things, but we're not able to really do that because there's so much chaos in life. Well, breathwork gives you the benefits that meditation promises. And, you know, there's these monks that have been known to access these like deep states of consciousness where they're able to experience bliss and be happy and peaceful and have no stress. But that takes 40 years of devotion to get to those levels of, of uh, peace inside of you. So with this breathwork technique, it actually allows you to get there just in seven minutes. Lucky for you guys, we're going to be taking you on about a 15-minute journey today so you can experience all the power of this. Yeah, go ahead. No, so I was, I was going to explain. I was going to say, Shanika earlier was like, you know, get your body moving, start dancing. I'm about to ask all of you to lay down, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's best to practice this technique when you're laying down. Now, if you don't want to lay down, you can also sit up. Just make sure that you're comfortable because you're going to be breathing through your mouth the entire time and your mouth is going to be open. So the breath is going to be like this. And when you're doing the breathing, the main thing here is to breathe in through your stomach. So when you breathe into your stomach, it's a different type of breath. Um, a lot of people that they, they breathe through their chest and that's because we're so stressed. All of the energy is going to the wrong places. But if you look at a baby, they actually breathe, they stomach breathe. And that's really the proper way to breathe. So if you guys right now can put your hands on your stomach and breathe into your stomach, you should really feel your stomach rise while you breathe. You're not forcing the breath in. You're not forcing the breath out. Your shoulders don't go like this. You don't do yeah. that. It's a continuous breath. So as soon as the air comes in, you let it go. As soon as it's all out, you bring it back up. And we're going to be reminding you through this entire process to keep breathing. Make sure you're, there's no pauses. It's a continuous breath. So it's like this. Notice how I'm not pausing. And during the 
during this journey, we'll ask you guys to speed up your breath where you will go about 10 of those and hold your breath. We'll guide you through the whole process. Why are we bringing that to you right now, especially in the beginning of the conference? Because when you're in a peaceful state, you're able to take in information more, you're able to catch more gifts and tools that you can use. So this is why we're doing this for you today. And like Antoine said, when you're in fight or flight, it's hard for you to be successful, to be happy, to be peaceful. And when you get out of this state, this mindset, you're actually able to enjoy the daily gifts of life that we all have the privilege to enjoy today, like being on this conference right now. I mean, how many of you guys are having so much fun? You took time out of your day to be here, and we thank you for that. With that being said, if you need to run to the restroom, drink water, do it now, because during this 15-minute 15, 15 session, you don't use the restroom. Don't stop to drink water. Why do I say that? It's because it takes you a while to get into that state where you're starting to process your emotions and stored up energy. And you don't want to distract yourself by getting water to then come back and try to get in that state again. So no excuses. I mean, if you came to this conference, it's because you want to feel better. You want to grow. enrich your life and grow. And with that being said, get comfortable. I encourage all of you to lay down, even if it's on the floor, just, just tell people not to step on you or anything. And I want you guys to check in with yourself. If you had to, if you had to look at your, yourself right now, right in this moment and, and label yourself on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, I feel absolutely incredible. I've never felt better in my life or one being, eh, I don't let feel us, too good. Let us know in the yeah, chat. Yeah, maybe type it in the chat. Where, Where are you right now? Just check in with yourself because after we're done with this, we're going to check in again and you're going to see just how in 15 minutes you feel completely different. And that's not an over-exaggeration. <laughs> so <clears throat> like we said, you're going to breathe in and out this entire time. The key here is to breathe with us. I want you to commit right now in this moment that if you're here, you're starting this, you're going to finish strong. You're going to go all in. You're going to, you're just going to give play full out for 15 minutes because that's how you're going to get the benefits of what we're talking about right now. So I just want you to check in one to 10. How do you feel and make the commitment? All right. If I'm doing this, I'm going to go all in. So we actually made a playlist that we're going to be playing through our system as well. So I don't know if the DJ is going to need to be playing music because we have a, a little system here as well. Um, that we curated specifically for you guys because the certain tones and the frequency of the music is so important to help elevate your states during this time. So with that being said, we're going to get started. Uh, we encourage you guys to close your eyes and just focus on your breath. You know, your breath knows what it needs to do. It never says, hey, breathe. You know, you do it without thinking. So trust your breath, trust this process. We thank all of you for being here and with that being said, let's get started on our journey. Yeah. And last thing, we're just going to shut off our camera because we have a microphone we're going to speak through over here. So we appreciate all you guys. And we hope by the end of this, we can all feel empowered and a great state to start this uh, beautiful conference. We'll turn on the camera as soon as we're done with this session. Start breathing. Close your eyes. Start breathing. Technical difficulties. Um, can you guys hear the music? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear the music. No. Can't hear the music. Okay, give us. Give, give us, us a second. one second. Okay, 
So breathe in and breathe out. Just focus on your breath and allow your breath to guide you. Deep breath in through your mouth. And exhale. Keep breathing. Breathe in and out through your stomach and just feel your belly rising with every single breath. Keep breathing. The key here is to breathe the entire time into your stomach. If you feel lightheaded, that's okay. Just keep breathing in and out. Your breath is powerful. Your breath will show you what it is you need to see, feel right now. So what is it that you're ready to let go of? What's the stressor in your life that's not serving you anymore? With your deep exhales, just let them go and return back to your breath. Allow your breath to be your main focus. Just keep breathing. With every inhale, focus on your breath. And every exhale, just let go of any thought that's coming into your mind's eye. And let's just see what can you experience through this session? What can you let go of? What can you create room for? And keep breathing. The key here is to breathe the entire time. Feel the breath go deep into your stomach and let it go. It's a continuous breath. And if you feel lightheaded, that's totally fine. Just keep breathing, that's all normal. As you breathe, I want you to think of ocean waves just coming up and going away from the shore. There's no force, it's a circular motion. And as you think of ocean waves, I want your breath to start matching the same rhythm. And as you breathe, as you stay committed to this moment, where are you in your mind's eye? What's your breath showing you? Are you excited to be here at this conference? What brought you here? What has been your biggest lesson of 2020? What are you ready to let go of? Allow your breath to just release whatever is not serving you anymore and return back to deep circular breathing remember you're breathing through your mouth the entire time inhales and exhales all through your mouth the 
you need to stop to swallow your spit, that's completely okay. But return back to the regular circular breathing. You're doing so good. This is your journey. Allow your breath to heal you. Allow your breath to release all those painful emotions, anxious moments that you have been holding on to. Let it go. It's not serving you anymore. Create space for something new. Energize your body, every living cell in your body as you let go and surrender to your breath. Allow your breath to guide you. You're doing so good. Remember, keep breathing in and out, through the mouth, into the stomach, it might be a little uncomfortable, but just stick with it. We promise you by the end of this, you'll be feeling amazing. Keep breathing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do 10 fast and deep breaths and we're going to hold on the exhale. So just follow our guidance. We're going to do 10 fast, deep breaths. Let's begin. Four more. Come on, keep, keep going. going. You got this. Last one all the way in and let it go and hold your breath. Keep your breath held. And just listen to the lyrics of the music as you feel the sensations in your body. Now breathe in and breathe out. And just feel your power returning to you. Listen to the lyrics. Feel the new sensations in your body as you realize that you can do anything that you are powerful. Keep breathing, circular breathing through your mouth. You're doing so good. We're almost there. Just keep breathing. Keep your breath passionate. What are you ready to let go of? Release all that stress, all that pain that you have been carrying from 2020 and let it go as you create new space in your body, in your heart for something new, for a new you in 2021. Take a deep breath in through your mouth and exhale it out.
feel the energy building up in your body as you feel the new sensations, the relaxation within your body, and keep breathing. And in your mind's eye, take a moment to just think of what is it that you want to accomplish? Who is it that you want to become? What's a quality you want to develop? What is your biggest goal of 2021? And who do you need to become to achieve that goal? Just take a few moments in your mind's eye to see what it is that you want to accomplish as you focus on your breath and keep going. Deep breathing. Feel the energy building up. Keep breathing. Come on, we're almost there. Keep pushing yourself. You're doing so good. Trust the process. Feel yourself accomplishing this goal. How does it feel? How big is the smile on your face? You got this. Anything that you dream of, you can achieve. And I want you to see that in your mind's eye as you keep a smile on your face and keep breathing. We're going to do five fast breaths as we go into our meditation. Let's begin. Two more. Last one all the way in. Exhale. And hold your breath. Keep your breath held. That's the last we're gonna do the breathing. And just keep your breath held just for a few seconds. You're gonna notice you can hold your breath a lot longer than usual. That's because your body's filled with oxygen and is alkalized. Now breathe in and breathe out and return to normal breathing. Now I want you to start breathing through your nose and into your heart and every breath you take, I want you to feel it go into your heart and let out a big exhale. One more time, in through your nose as you let out a big exhale. Now, I want you to bring your hands to your heart. Put a smile on your face and think of one person you're grateful for in your life. Think of a memory from your past that put a smile on your face. Who was next to you? It can be a friend, a family member, a loved one, a pet. Feel complete gratitude for that moment. And next, as you feel the gratitude building up in this moment, I want you to open your arms and in, the, in your mind's eye, I want you to see a version of yourself that's much younger. Go back to the past years and think of a time where you were five or seven or ten, what's your earliest memory of your childhood? I want you to see that young version of yourself and as you approach him or her, as you see the smile on their face, they have a message for you, words of wisdom, one thing that they want you to remember today. What's their message for you? Is it to remember that you are loved? Is it to remember to always be adventurous? 
what's the message they have for you? Take a moment in your mind's eye as you connect with the younger version of yourself. Once you hear their message, just take a deep breath in through your nose, into your heart, and exhale it out. One more time. Inhale through your nose, into your heart, and exhale it out. Next, I want you to take a deep inhale in through your nose and wrap your arms around you. Hug yourself. Give yourself a big hug and say thank you. Thank you for being here, for not giving up, for having the courage to keep going despite all difficulties. Honor yourself in this moment as you realize that you are alive, you are strong, you did this. Be proud of yourself for sticking with this the entire time. And put a smile on your face because this is gonna be an amazing day. A beautiful experience. And now as you feel the relaxation in your body, the love in your heart, you can gently open your eyes and come back to the room. We'll give all of you a few minutes. To come back to the room. And you can let us know in the chat how you feel, how your experience was. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Anton, for that amazing breakfast. Oh, <laughs> thank you, guys. You did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Sometimes when there's so much going on in our lives and a lot of us, we're so loving, so we constantly try to extend ourselves to other people. We forget to take care of ourselves. And ladies and gentlemen, the only way you can extend yourself to other people and help others is when you can first help yourself. So take seven minutes, put your favorite music on and just breathe through your mouth. Hold your breath for 10 seconds. And then at the end, just think of a few things you're grateful for. We are so grateful for this opportunity. We thank all of you for being here. Make sure you drink a lot of water. And if any of you guys got teary eyed, you, ha you had happy experiences, sad, something you were able to let go of, make sure you journal it because those memories that come up or anything that comes up, it's, it's here to serve you. And I want you to trust that. And now that you're relaxed and more centered, you can grab a cup of coffee <laughs> so that we can bring on our other guests and, and make sure that you all have a beautiful and amazing time at the conference today. Yeah, thank you guys. You know, like we started this, our lives are controlled by the energies we're in. So if we could take time to cultivate a good state, a good energy, we're going to show up so different in business. We're going to show up so different in our relationship, our friends, our family to the world and maybe you know open more hearts around us which hopefully can have a ripple effect of goodness across the whole planet because we all know love is the answer but sometimes our thinking brain forgets that so we got to get back here so we hope we did that for you guys today thank you thank you very much again Irina and anton that was amazing thank you guys with that said lady um, and gentlemen, because we do have some uh, fellas joining us today. <clears throat> I am so stoked, excited, overjoyed, hyped, because our next uh, presenter, he's amazing. He's the bomb. Every time I see our next presenter, I'm, I am going to say who he is. I'll go get my book and I get my, my pen because he keeps it real. He's relatable, and I just love that about him. Um, so with that said, it is my 
a pleasure now to introduce uh, Pastor John DeCure. He is going to lead us in a workshop titled Coaching versus Chemistry. Some of us may get coaches who are there to work with us, who are there to, to help us move into that next state or that next area of our life that we may be afraid of not moving into. But what's most important when you get a, a, a coach is you gotta have that chemistry because you know if, if there's no chemistry, it's not gonna work. So he's going to lead us uh, in a workshop to discuss coaching versus chemistry. Here is a multifaceted leader and visionary who impacts lives as an author. He's a mentor, he's a coach, he's a community leader, and a scholar. John currently serves as an executive assistant pastor and chief administrator at Victory Bible Church and his hometown of Pasadena. And as the, the, the director of programming of Harambe Ministry Performing Arts Center. With that said, again, I am like so stoked to have Mr. John DeCure give us some info. Bring it. You gonna bring it? I know. I got my book right here. In my <laughs> oh man. That's awesome. Oh yeah, and DJ Severe, he playing my song. I love it. Hey, is that what is that, bro? Is that Tupac? What is that? <laughs> hey, look, I'm excited about about being here with y'all today. I'm gonna get right in. I was I'm trying to share my screen. I want to know uh, if y'all can actually see this. Um, let me know uh, if you can or not. Uh, let me see if I can get this going here. Um, share my screen here. Tell me if you can actually see this. Uh, I'm sharing my screen now. I'm trying to go to this other screen here. Do you see um, my slides? If you do, can you chat me in there and tell me that you see them? I want to know, can you see them? What do you see? Tell me what you see. You saw chemistry versus, okay, yes, you can see them. Okay, okay, good. All right, great. So as long as you can see them. All right, so listen, so today I, I am excited about being here um, with you. First, let me give a special shout out to uh, Benita Bennett for giving me my initial invitation. Um, uh, she She's a wonderful person. Uh, in addition to that, I, I want to say thank you uh, to this wonderful host. Um, I, I got a chance to be in a meeting with Miss Lena Kennedy uh, the other day, and I was thinking to myself, man, this is a absolute a uh, strong, strong woman, and I am, uh, I am just excited and I'm humbled that Miss Kennedy would actually have me here today. So thank you very much, Miss Kennedy, and to all the staff and the whole team for having me here. Uh, and with that said, I just want to get right, right into this. Is is people often ask me, you know, why, why am I here? Uh, like, like, and I'm, and I'm always conscious of this piece. Like, I want to be sure. Uh, that whenever I do something, I know why I'm in a space, like why. So I want to tell you today why I'm here today. Um, uh, uh, with all the stuff that that was said by Miss Davis, by all the things that uh, she was processing when she was talking about all the accomplishments and things of that nature, um, uh, like like literally, um, the the thing that I want you to know is that I am the son of Linda. That's That's why I'm here today. Uh, and the reason why I have my mom up is because, like some of you, uh, my mom was an influential, powerful person, and I loved her because um, not only was she uh, she she never she didn't go to college. Uh, that wasn't her story. She did she didn't have uh, uh, my academic background at all. But can I tell you, my mom started her own university, and she was in the University of Common. She she started a university called Common Sense. Uh, if if you know what I'm talking about, like that that University of Common Sense, can you just type in the chat? I know what you're talking about. I am a product of of, of Linda's university, and this is what she said. She said to me uh, all the time. She said an investment is when you put something in someone, and when you expect something in return. An investment is when you put something in someone, and you expect something in return. So what am I saying to you uh, today? Is is that I'm I'm standing on this virtual stage. And my heart and my hope and my uh, everything inside of me, I want to make sure that I make an investment into you 
And then what, what I'm asking you to, to do in return is make sure that you show up in the world the way you're supposed to. Because I, I believe that there's a reason why you're here, that you have a vision, that you have you have a vision that is large, that is big. And if I'm talking to you, um, male or female, if you are here and you are a person that you know you have a vision, you know you have a right to sit at any board table, any executive uh, table, there, there is nothing that you can't do. You are qualified. If I'm talking to you, I want to make sure, I want you to participate with me. Say, I'm, this is me. I'm you talking to me. I, I'm the person. Listen, if you, 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 are, you do deserve that promotion. If that's you, you got a large vision. Uh, I want to I want to talk to you for a minute because can I tell you something? Your vision is always always bigger than you are. Your vision is always bigger than you. Your your vision is always something that you are reaching for, stretching for, uh, trying to get to. And so and, and so, uh, but can I tell you something? Like the reality of it is, is that when, whenever you have a vision that's big, most times if your vision is big enough, you don't match the vision that you are reaching for. And that's what makes vision a chisel. Vision now will chisel away at all the stuff. Uh, and I love when we were doing the breathing. When we were doing the breathing, I was in here breathing myself, breathing in and letting it out. I was doing that myself. And when, and when she said this, she says, think about what you're letting go of. Can I tell you something about vision? As you move towards your vision, your vision acts as a chisel and it chisels away at the things that's not supposed to be there. Michelangelo, the sculptor, the artist, what he said is, he said, I saw an angel in the marble and I set him free. I like his other one. He said, the sculpture is already complete within the marble block before I start my work. He said, it's already there. I just have to chisel away the superfluous material. In other words, my, I, what, what you are, you already have the goods on the inside of you. There's just in the process of moving towards the vision, we are constantly chiseling away at what we are. And I'm going to tell you that chiseling is, is called self-development. That chiseling is called growth. That, that's, how, that's how we chisel away to get to our vision. We are constantly growing and moving forward. You know what I mean? And this is, and I don't know about you, sometimes growing, growing comes with growing pains, you know? Uh, but, but let me tell you something. Uh, Jim Rohn says it this way. He says, he says, listen, your level of success will rarely exceed your level of personal development because success is something that you attract by the person that you become. A lot of times now with this vision being bigger than us, we are always reaching for something that, that, is, that is bigger than us. And this is awesome because what happens is in time, that personal development, that growth plan that we put into place is the thing that makes us who we are and that pushes us forward. But this growth comes with growing pains. This growth comes with growing pains. I'm hitting you with a lot of quotes, and I hope you write stuff down. Ms. Davis said she was writing it down. Let me tell you, I'm getting to the point of the coaching versus chemistry in just a second here. Uh, uh, my friend, Jean Jobs, she said it this way. She says, this is the reason why. She says, growing pains, uh, when it comes to your vision, is always going to be there. This is the reason why you got to find a vision that will pull you through the pain of transformation. There will always be... Uh, some some tension and some uncomfortability as you move from one level to the next, to the place that you know that you deserve. There will always be a place. That's why you got to find a vision that will pull you through the pain of transformation. All right. So uh, with that being said, um, there are two ways that we grow. We Now we get into it. There's two ways that we grow usually. Growth requires some type of coaching. Right. Uh, growth requires some type of coaching. And we usually get coaching from two places. We get it from people that's close to us. Or we get it from uh, people uh, with the background and experience in the area that we're moving towards. That we get it from we get coaching from either one of these, these, these two places. And I want to I want to venture to say to you, I want to actually put this out here. Uh, this is this is my my statement. You are always being coached by something. And with that being said, let, let, let's go into some definitions here. I know you can't, some of y'all is like, man, that's too small. I can't read it. Don't worry. I'll make sure I get it to you, the parts I want you to have. So in the case of this conversation and this conversation that me and you are having right now, when I say chemistry, I'm specifically talking about that, that last part of this slide where it says instinctual attraction or affinity. These, I'm, I'm going to say the chemistry, I'm, I'm going to change that word chemistry to like relationships, to the, 
to, to our friends, to our best friends, to, to our homies, or whatever you call those people, to your family, like people who are, are always coaching you saying, hey, this is what I think you should do, but these people are close to you. <laughs> then there is like the coach, the other coach, that like the, 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 the definition of what coach really is, I love it, it's a large kind of four-wheeled covered carriage. I got this from the etymology uh, dictionary, and I loved it because when you go down to like the last part, I love it. Uh, it says it says a trainer, uh, it says an instructor or a trainer, right? Uh, that that is, is slang for a private tutor who carries a student through an exam. So the, the the idea of the coach, which is literally carrying a person, the the kind of four wheels cover carriage, is the same thing we use for the word coach. Literally, when we say something is coaching you, it is carrying you to the next level, carrying you to the next thing, carrying you to that to that next. Uh, destination. So then the question that I have to ask myself is, is my coaching experiences, is it carrying me to my next, to my next level, or is familiarity, that that chemistry portion of it, that that people I know that I let speak into my life, uh, uh, the people that, that talk to me all the time, like my, my besties or whatever you call them, am I letting, is that familiarity keeping me stagnant? Or is that, is, is that coaching experience getting me to my next? What's carrying you? If the word coach means I'm being carried and I'm saying something is coaching you, I gotta ask myself, what am I being, what am I being carried by? Do I, have a, do I have a coach that has the experience or am I being coached just by things that are close to me? And if I am being coached by either, the question is, is that am I getting to my next level with that coaching? If you're getting something, please text you getting something. I, I can't really see the chats right now because I'm going through my slides, but I want to know you were there, right? All right, let's keep going. I like this. Now, I want you to buckle up your seatbelts. I'm going to say some things, and, and you are allowed to disagree. I, I, I get it, but I, I have to tell you just, just from my experience, from coaching people and processing with people, how do you know if familiarity is impeding your process? How do you know? How do, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know? And I'm going to tell you one of the things you got to be careful of. You got to beware of the box people. That's what I call them, the box people. You got to be you got to beware of the box people. Well, who are the who are the box people? These are the people who have created a box to put you in that they are comfortable with. Sometimes if you're growing too fast, sometimes if you're exceeding too fast, sometimes people will create a box for you and then try to put you in the box. For example, uh, they make $40,000 a year in their job, so you should make $40,000, and that should be your, your you, you have ambition to sit at the boardroom tables. You have ambition to be a, a executive. You have, you have the, you have these thoughts, but they say, hey, you should just, you know, I gotta beware of the box people. And I'm gonna tell you, these are some box people questions and statements I wanna kind of run by you. Box people questions and statements. Tell me if, you, if you've seen these before. I think you're doing too much. Yeah, have you ever seen somebody, you know, well, you know, I think, I think you're doing too much. I can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody tell me, I think you're doing too much. Because what they're doing is they're taking a measurement of their own lives and they're measuring you by their capacity. You cannot let somebody that's, that's coaching you. You can't let them actually, you, that's why it's so important. We'll get to this at the end. It's so important you choose the right coach. Because if you don't choose the right coach, you'll start to get to with the box people, the box coaches. Another statement, you don't have enough money, do you? You got enough money for that? And can I tell you something about money? Um, there will always be provision for vision. This is what I've learned. There will always be provision for vision. As you move to your vision, things will come to you. Things will be attracted to you because vision will always get you to spaces and places that, that you can't even imagine. Three, another statement that they make, they say, you starting that right now? Like, you know, you hear the voice go up at the end. Uh, you, you starting that right now? Like, it, it implies that you should not be starting, right? These are all like box people statements and questions. I got more, I got more, I got more. Um, you, you tell them, yeah, this is what I'm thinking, whatever. And they say back to you, man, I was thinking about that too, but I'll call it something else. <laughs> I, I was thinking about that too, but I'm calling it something else. Uh, number, number five, are you going to do that? What, what about me? 
Are, are you leaving me? Are, are, are you leaving me? My last one, I love this one. Uh, I get this all the time. Hey, man, hey, 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 bro, you know, can you put me on? Can you put me on? You got to be careful of the people who want to eat the fruit of the thing, but they don't want to pay for the pain of the process. Most people, hear me, we are all being coached. Who are we let coaching? Who, who Are we letting people with the experience in the background coach us? Or are we be, are we being coached by by people that are that we are in relationship with that 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 more so we end up kind of coaching they're getting on our boat as opposed to us being pulled into a space a coach is supposed to pull you into a space who are you allowing to plant seeds in the garden? Of your mind who are you allowing to plant seeds in the garden of your mind because all coaching carries us somewhere and I'm gonna tell you seeds are real seeds are real and they produce fruit every time I'm listening to people every time I'm being coached these are seeds that are going into my mind these are seeds that are that I'm letting into my space these are seeds that I'm and seeds grow let me tell you so who are you allowing to plant seeds in the garden of your mind this is the question that I have for you today. This is the investment that I'm giving you today, and I'm and I'm hoping that you're getting something from this. I'm hoping that you're feeling me. Uh, I, I can't I can't quite see you, but I know you're there. Who are you allowing? I'm talking to some a few people uh, that you, you're you're looking at me. Who are you allowing to plant seeds in the garden of your mind? Uh, let me keep going. I have a friend, uh, and I love it. She. Um, um, she actually was planting, like she has a garden, but she had this, this one plant. And what she did was she took this plant y'all and, uh, she got it and she potted it and it was great. And she told me that the plant actually grew. It started growing. Right. It, and it, it started growing. And then all of a sudden it stopped. And she said to me, she says, John, what I had to do was I realized that the plant could only grow to the size of the pot that it was placed in. That's all. That's that's the only that's the only space that it had to grow. She said, so I had to repot it, take it out of that pot and put it into a bigger one. And then it grew more. What am I trying to say to you? Ladies and gentlemen, what am I trying to say to you? You must change to a larger pot to grow larger. This is why the coaching process is so important. You if your coach is not where you want to go, my Lord. If your coach is not where you want to go, you only can grow to the size of the pot that you're in. Some of us have decisions to make today about growing to a larger pot. So then the question becomes, okay, how do I get a good coach? How do I get a good mentor? How do I do it? Uh, and, and don't worry, I, I'm actually, you will see, I'm going to provide you with all these these little uh, stuff. I'm going to tell you, how, tell you how you can get all this stuff uh, from me, and you'll be able to do that. But I want to walk you through just a few of these uh, really quickly. I have my timer going so I can make sure I stay within time. Uh, let me see how I'm doing. I'm doing all right. I got a couple of minutes here. Um, uh, okay, so how do I choose a good coach mentor? What, what do I do? Uh, I, the first thing I have on here, uh, you want to you want to choose a person that either has a work ethic that you want or works in the same career that you want to work in. You want to choose a person that either has a work ethic that you want or works in the same career that you want to work in. Yes, yes, yes. Let's keep going. Uh, and number two, you want to make sure that there is a vis there, there is visible evidence of their accomplishments. You want to have you want to make sure that your coach ha there's a there's visible evidence. There's evidence that they are who they say they are that they are. You want to make sure of that because some people I, I don't know about y'all. See, I'm getting a little older. I'm 44 now, and 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 so you know I've learned that you you can be famous on IG but not have nothing in person. 
Yeah, I just want to set the table for y'all today and get get y'all ready for the rest of the day. Uh, it's so important that you understand this. Some people are famous on IG because IG never they it never records our pitfalls. It never records who. Listen, I can take this camera and be whoever I want to be. I got all kind of filters. You got to watch the filter coaches. You got to make sure that they actually visibly have what. Uh, uh, something visible that, that kind of displays their accomplishments. Let's keep going. I, I'm, I'm getting stuck here. Three, do they ever make time for you? Do they ever make time for you? Even if it's a small amount, do they ever make time for you? I'm going to keep going. Four, you like, oh, man, I'm going too fast. Don't worry. I'm going to send this to you. Don't worry. Is my appointment with my mentor always bumped, even when it's scheduled in advance? Do they always bump me out the way? I want I want to process that. Five, do they acknowledge important milestones in my life? Do they do they do they acknowledge it? Do they do they do they actually praise my 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 uh, my my performances and and my special events and the stuff that I do? Right. Six, is the career they are in a vocation or is it just a means to an end? There's some mentors, right? Um, uh, they, it's, it, it's what they do is just a means to an end. That's not the kind of coach that I'm looking for. I'm always looking for a coach. They have like a personal heart thing in what they do. Because usually when people do stuff in their heart, it's a whole different thing. Seven is my mentor always learning and growing. As soon as I find a mentor that stops reading, stops, per, stops trying to reach for something more. I'm like, that mentor is not growing no more. Eight, I like this one. Does my mentor or does my coach have coaches? I can, man, let me, let me, let me tell you. I'm gonna jump to 10. I'm gonna send you this. Don't worry. I know y'all like, man, he's going so fast. Don't worry. I'm gonna send it to you. Relax, relax. 10, did I receive any insight in the first 90 days of being coached or mentored? Does my mentor or does my coach divulge any of their secrets? If a coach or mentor and if you don't see some type of increase in the first 90 days, that ain't the person. And if they don't divulge their secret, if they don't give me a secret, then that all my coaches that I've ever had have always given me secrets. And I will stop there because he, the, the question that I was asked is to talk the thing I was told to talk about was coaching versus chemistry. And I'm like, well, that that's who. And so I'm talking about, you know, I just told you how to how to choose a coach. But can I tell you something? There's also a way that you got to be a good mentee. Don't worry, I know you can't read it. I'm only gonna give you a couple of these. Number one, how do I make sure that I'm attractive to that type of coach? How do I make sure that if you want a different kind of coach than just the people that's close to you, you gotta make sure that you're attractive to a coach. How do I make sure I'm attractive? Let me tell you something. You gotta isolate a time to spend with your mentor with no distractions. Most mentors, most coaches, if they're worth their weight, don't have time to waste. Uh, I, there was a mentor that I took on some years ago, and um, and and her name is Felicia Henderson, and she's one of the biggest um, uh, 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 black television writers, uh, in te basically in television. And this is how I got her. I said, Miss Felicia, can I have five minutes of your time a month? I asked for an isolated bit of time, but I asked for five minutes a month. She gave me five minutes a month and I waited until she changed it. Right when we got to four minutes and 59 seconds, I would say, thank you so much for your time. And one time she said, no, I got more to say. That, that five minutes turned into 10, that 10 turned into 30. Now, now she calls me her colleague. But that took years. My, my approach to, to her was, I appreciate your time. So I came, I came ready. Number two, if you have a meeting with your mentor, always pay the bill. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, this is where I tell people whenever I'm whenever I, I'm going to stay attractive. If I call a coach or a mentor and say, can you come have lunch with me? I always pay the bill. That's just my way of saying thank you. I'm not going to get into that. Y'all like, oh, God, he's going too far. I'm just telling you, these are just some normal practices that I've seen to get people into. door. Let, let me explain something to you. The coach don't need your money. The coach don't need you to pay for the lunch. They don't need that. It's a gesture that says I appreciate your time. Three. Do you support their events? Any event that your mentor or your coach is, is having, you want to make sure that you that you support it. Four, make sure you do gift cards, Starbucks cards, uh, appreciation for for their birthdays and things of that nature. Five, learn their history. Learn their history. Six, 
never entertain a meeting with a mentor without pre-framed pre questions. I got a chance to sit with one of my heroes one time. And let me tell you something. I went with I went to him with 40 questions pre-written. People are always asking to be coached. But like I said, the word coach means I'm carrying you somewhere. Well, where do you want to go? One way you get that clarity is always have pre-framed questions. I will not sit down with a mentor or a coach without having pre-framed questions on what it is I'm trying to do and where I'm going. Number seven, don't drop by the office without permission. Don't do it. Uh, number eight, never do a follow-up meeting with your, with your coach without doing what they have asked you to do in the previous meeting. Are y'all getting something from this? I'm, I'm excited. I'm having a whole bunch of a whole bunch of fun. Number nine, if you are sent to represent your coach, failure is not an option. If they tell you to go somewhere and do something, I've had this happen to me a dozen times. John, I need to go represent me. I want to make sure failure is not an option. I got to make sure I represent them at the highest level. All right. Uh, let me tell you, I, I can go on and on. And on and on, I like literally. Well, I'm gonna give you this one last thing. So look, y'all. I know y'all looking like, man. I need this in my life. Okay, look, check it out. This is what I did. I, I said I'm gonna do a free download. So all you gotta do is text info the number four PJ to three three seven seven seven. If you do that, I'm gonna send you everything I just told you right now. You get a free download. Boom, just like that, and you all good. Free download. So because I know I was going super duper fast, I wanted to make sure I had a way for you to get that. I want to make sure you got that text info for PJ to 33777 and you will get everything I just said right now uh, on, a, on a PDF really, really easy, right? Um, and, and that is, this is, this is, this is how, you, how you balance the whole thing of coaching versus chemistry. Um, don't be afraid to repot yourself because some of the things that's coaching us right now, it's not it. Oh, somebody's asking, what was the code for the download again? Can you please? Okay, okay, all right, all right. So um, you, what you do is you, you, you go to your text messages and you, and you go to 33777 and you type in there info, the number four, PJ, right? And as soon as you do it, it's going to send you back the link to that PDF I was just reading from because it was too small, I'm sure, for you guys to read it. Thank you, Benita, for doing that. And let me tell you, I, I hope you got something. And don't forget, an investment is when you put something in someone and you expect something in return. The, oh, you hear my, hear my alarm? That's my... That's my 25 minutes. I'm I'm actually done. I will. I guess I can entertain a question or two. Miss Davis, are you close? DJ, are you close? I I'm. I wanted to get in and get out. You was that good? Am I straight? You did an amazing job. You never fail. <laughs> and you gave us a lot of information. First and foremost, I want to thank you for giving us that giving us the information for the download because those are tools and nuggets that can go back and review and ingest and digest, let me take that back, digest, to really take in what you gave us. You gave us so much information. One of the questions, I do have a quick question okay. um, since, since we, we have a little bit of time. Okay. When you have a coach, and I may already know this answer, but how long do you, how long, um, I know some, sometimes we're all real quick. We want things real fast. We want to, you know, change real quick. How long do do you really recommend to have a coach? And I guess it depends on what your goals are. Yeah. But it seems like from what I'm hearing you're saying is that it's a it's a process that you guys continue to have over time. Yeah. The, the, this is this is what I always say, Ms. Davis. I think that it is a you, if if you are a good good mentee, you will turn into a colleague of your coach. Mm. You will transform into that. Every coach I've ever had, I have 
I have turned into a colleague of my coach. So uh, Felicia Henderson, like I said, is a good example for me um, because she does a lot of work. And when I first started, she sent me to a place and it was it was harsh and it beat me up. It took me about two or three years to kind of get a flow into that that process. And then it was like I noticed that her and I then started doing projects together. So then she okay. starts bringing it, bringing me in as a colleague. So anything she does, she always brings me in. John, what do you think? Right. So like that is that is the shift that happens when you actually know you're getting somewhere. And then I had a I, I actually took on a new coach this year. Um, okay. And I started in February because I noticed that I had some I had some areas that I needed to be carried out. Like I need to be pushed a little bit more through these other areas um, because I don't know about you. Sometimes in business, I have a couple of businesses. It's difficult. Sometimes you want to hire your friends and your friends is like that ain't it. So I had mm-hmm. to I had to remove some things and he, and he was the, he was like, hey, bro, you got to do this tomorrow. So like right. and me and him, we met every every other week, every month. Right. So okay. that was like something. So now um, he actually spoke at my event. I had an event yesterday. He spoke at my event yesterday. So like okay. over time. So that's been since February. I've been with him. So now okay. when, when I ask him, hey, can you do this? Now we're, that, that that relationship is shifting. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, and it sounds and I love that um, because I love how what you how you is all merging together in a sense because your coaches become your network, mm-hmm. right? And they continue to help you. you. You mentioned about planting the seed and it grows. So now the fruits, yes, the fruits are going to be different, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and a lot of times. You know, I, I will speak for myself. We as women, we think we can do everything. Let me figure it out. I can do this. Oh, I can do this. I'm a jack of all trades. And over time, that puts a burden on us mentally, physically, and it causes us to, to have some self-doubt. Yes. So I love how it's important how you mentioned that, one, you need a coach. And two, I love how you mentioned when looking for a coach what are the attributes that they need to have yes 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 and that's why i wanted to make sure i gave it like and when you get this document it's actually i got a lot of information that i like there's stuff that people have asked me over the years and i just want to put all that information on one document so that you can have it all but specifically what i was talking about is on pages eight through eleven eight okay. through eleven and that that's all the stuff about how, how do i choose a good coach and then how do I make sure I'm a good mentee? There's a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't even mention. Uh, I figure you can read it. And um, and I'm just, I'm excited, man. And I, I'm so excited to be here with y'all today. I'm going to do it myself. I'm trying to be cool and calm. <laughs> but, I'm, but, hey, but I'm super juiced. You know what I'm saying? I really am. I am. So then my, my last question for you is, you got enough room for coming on as mentees? <laughs> hey, let me tell you. I have a, I have a, I actually have a coaching, a, a, a coaching development um, group that I, that I do. And if, if people are interested in that, you can go to johndecure.com and it's right there and you can become, you actually can be a part of, of, of the group. I meet with a group every single month and, uh, okay. and we go, and we go hard, we go hard every month. So yeah. And I, I, and I always tell people, um, my group is not for everybody because I'm looking for results from people. So like, I, I don't want like people who like, talk 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 we won't right. doers does that make sense yes it does yeah okay so thank you very much um pastor john decure for your um uh, workshop it was needed especially um for our conference of becoming her and so with that said ladies if you could you know social media hashtag he gave so many points you know growth requires coaching growth requires uh, growing pains. Beware of the box people. Be a good mentee. You have to have a vision. And with that said, um, we want to thank you and honor and, and want to honor your time. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you guys. I appreciate you, everybody. Thank you so much. Wow. I told you guys he would not disappoint. Okay. We have had thus far, we've had some, we've prayed, we've had uh, a little bit of exercise, we've had some breath work, and then we got into um, talking about our vision and what that looks like in coaching versus chemistry. 
And with that said, now we're going to pivot just a little bit to our next workshop that will be led by Dr. Deedee, who will lead us in a conversation about are chemicals in my hair products increasing my risk for breast cancer? Wow, ladies, I know we are always putting different chemicals and dyes and colors and different things and, you know, slick down uh, products in our hair. This is such a vital topic because are the chemicals that we're putting in our hair, are they, are they dangerous for our health? With that said, um, I'm going to introduce Dr. Dee Dee Works. As she is a postdoctoral for the City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center. She has multiple faculty appointments, has numerous peer reviewed publications, and is an expert, expert excuse me, presenter in the field of cancer and mental health and has received multiple awards and accolades. Dr. Dee Dee earned a BS degree at St. John's University. She has her MPH from Morehouse School of Medicine and a PhD from Loma Linda University School of Public Health. Please welcome to the platform, Dr. Dee Dee. Hi, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Okay, let me just get some having a little bit of issue with sharing my screen so okay perfect so you guys can hear me and you can see me excellent um let's see if we can try this one more time tech support if you can help us oh here it is all right i think we're in business can you guys all see my screen Okay. Okay, perfect. So it looks like if I share the screen completely, you won't be able, I won't be able to see the chat. So I'm going to go back and forth on this a little bit so that we can get started. Thank you all so very much for having me. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh, I got so much out of that breath work. I needed it for just to settle my nerves. Um, I'm glad that I'm among friends and I just want to thank the previous speaker. Those were some gems that he dropped that I just greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for that. I wanted to first say thank you to Ms. Kennedy for this opportunity and then um, congratulations on 20 years of the amazing work that you're doing with all of your staff members and your community. This is really quite amazing. This is my second time at this conference and I'm happy to be a speaker this year. Also wanted to just give a special thank you to um, Monsi Adams and also Dr. Rick Kittles for giving me this opportunity. So let's get started. Um, my name is Dede Tete and I am, like stated earlier, I'm currently a postdoctoral fellow in the Division of Health Equities at City of Hope under the supervision of Dr. Kittles. Um, the question that we're asking today is, are the chemicals in my hair products increasing my risk for breast cancer? So that's the discussion that we're going to be having today. So I'm really, really excited to be joining you all to share a little bit about my journey of becoming her because this project really has a lot to do with that. So let's begin with answering the question, what's hair got to do with it? Well, if we hear our sister India Ari, she declares to us that she is not her hair, but the soul that lives within. Solange proclaims that for for all of us, maybe for many of us as um, women of color, especially black women, the touching of our hair is a dangerous territory. Don't do it. That's just the plain and simple. And at some point during Willow's development of becoming her, she urged us to just whip our hair back and forth. Um, so what's hair got to do with the conversation that we're having today? The answer for some black women is hair is everything. And we asked black women here in Southern California, specifically 91 women to be exact, that's a part of the, that was a part of the Cost of Beauty project, 
Um, and this is what one of the hairstylists had to say about what hair me means to our community. It, meaning hair, has to do with everything. It has a lot to do with your health. I mean, unfortunately, it's very important. It's almost scary how important it is because a lot of women won't just go somewhere in a ponytail. So we're gonna focus on the hair has a lot to do with health on the next slides and get a better understanding of the how. So on the screen are three products and I want you all to use the chat, which um, use the chat right now to respond to the question related to which product is the most hazardous. And I'll give everyone a few seconds. I'm going to go out of full screen so that I can see the chat. And let's just say, okay, excellent. So people are responding. So which, kaboom, all right. Thank you guys for voting. So a couple more, a couple more votes. Kaboom, excellent, kaboom. Okay, so we're getting the point. Everyone agrees that on this slide, kaboom is the most hazardous. So let me go back to full screen with the presentation and see if we are correct. So which product is the most hazardous? I'm gonna go over four key takeaways from the slide that I want you all to take home. And we'll get to the answer of which product has the most hazardous in point number three. So the total number of chemicals, here's point number one. The total number of chemicals in the products that you use on an everyday basis is not the same as the number of ingredients that's listed on the bottle. So for example, Kaboom, as everyone stated, is the most hazardous, lists eight ingredients on the bottle versus 229 chemicals that are actually found in the product. Point number two, these products include some of the chemicals with the highest health hazards, including phthalates and parabens, which are known endocrine disrupting chemicals. So thylate, diethyl thylate, for example, is a synthetic substance that makes plastic more flexible and can be found in our toothbrushes, our automobile parts, tools, toys, food packaging, and cosmetic products. So at this point, your eyebrows are probably raised that what is a product that I use to clean my tub also in the product that I use for my hair. Point number three, the unfortunate reality is the children product, just for me, actually contains more hazardous chemicals than the product that you use to clean your top. And the product that some of us as adults use to manage our hair. That is the unfortunate reality. And the highest number of chemicals, this is point number four, and health hazards is partially due to fragrance that's contained, fragrances that are contained in these products. And these endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs have been linked to chronic health effects, including cancer. Fragrance is one word that you will find on most of the products that you use on the daily basis. That means dozens to hundreds of chemicals that you will never see listed on the bottle simply because it's protected by a trade secret. But luckily for us here in California, because of the passage of SB 312, which is the cosmetic fragrance and flavor ingredients right to no act of 2020. This, this act was, um, this law was authored by Senator Connie Leva was signed into law this year. Manufacturers now have are required to disclose fragrance ingredients in the products that we use. But again, this is just here in California. So I'm going to exit out of full screen again, and I'm just going to take take a pulse check, an emoticon pulse check since we are um, in this virtual space. How are people feeling with the information that I just dropped? So many of you, the votes were that kaboom should have been the most toxic, right? In actuality, so we have number four. Um, so say what now? I completely understand. Megan, thank you so much for voting. How are other people feeling? Too sad for words. Thank you, Maya, for relaying those kind of emotions. Um, so how are people feeling? I want, I want to take some time to just pause to acknowledge how you're feeling 
before I move on because I don't want to just speed through this presentation. So we're getting a lot of shock, um, some angry emojis, too sad for words. And I just want to really to say, I hear you, I feel you, and we're going to keep going, but just know that your feelings are, I see you. I see you. So what brand of shampoo was it again? I will take some questions at the end. So I'm going to keep going so that we can get through um, all of the slides. So save your questions and put them in the Q&A box so that we can answer them at the end of this. So we're going to keep going because I have a, a little bit more to share with you. So we, you've heard me say several times throughout those beginning slides, the words endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs. So what are they? EDCs are chemicals that interfere with the body's endocrine system, which is made up of glands and organs that produce, store, and secrete hormones. In other words, these chemicals interfere with the way the body's hormones work. These chemicals are, are ubiquitous, which means that they are found in several areas in our environment, like our personal care products, our food, et cetera, as the picture indicates on the right. And they can affect your health, including your risk to cancer. So for the remainder of this talk, I'm going to focus on EDC exposure and breast cancer with the emphasis on black women. So let's first talk a bit about what we know about the disease. Before I give you the numbers, I want us to first pause and be reminded that the numbers or statistics that I'm going to go over on this disease are people and they are faces that have been impacted by this disease. So the impact that it's not just on the patient fighting the disease itself, but it's their families, it's us and mem as members of their community. And I want to first, for example, Coma McDowell Coco is a really good friend of mine. She was diagnosed with triple negative inflammatory breast cancer, given two years to live, and then she was also told that she would never have children. Fortunately, that was not the outcome of her story. She is now a 14 year breast cancer survivor and thriver and is the mother of an 11 year old child. While we mourn those that have unfortunately died from the disease, we also celebrate Coco and others that are on the screen with similar stories. And the 3.8 billion lives that are still with us today due to screening and advancements in treatment. So what do we know about breast cancer? So here are some of the numbers. Again, those, these numbers have faces attached to them and I hope that message um, is driven home from the previous slide. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of death in women. One in eight women will be diagnosed in their lifetime. Black women are 40% more likely to die from the disease and are more likely to be diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. Higher incidence is among black women younger than age 40. I don't know if you noticed for a lot of the individuals that I shared their, their information on the previous slide, many of them were diagnosed prior to age 30. We also know there are ways to reduce our risk for breast cancer, which includes knowing your boobs, getting a mammogram, and for some of us sooner than age 40, depending on your family history and your genetics. Number 10, while it's on my list um, as an area of emerging research, because I'm doing this research, it's not necessarily wouldn't be on everybody's list right now, as a risk reduction for breast cancer. And I'm going to go into more information as to why. Again, this is a new area of research. And here's, I'm going to share with you in the next few slides, what do we know about this area? And before I go over that information, here's a question that I want you to reflect on as I go through that, the, the information that I'm gonna share in the next few slides. What's the cost of your beauty? Is there a cost? So let's continue. Here's some information about what we know from the laboratory or bench science perspective related to EDCs and breast cancer. Parabens are preservatives found in hair and other personal care products with higher concentrations found in urine samples of black women. 
Parabens also increase cell proliferation, in other words, cell growth. They decrease cell death. And they also alter global gene expression in ER positive breast cancer cell lines. For example, they interrupt in some ways the cell cycle. From the epidemiological context, Black women carry the burden of EDC exposures found in hair and other personal care products. Black women tend to use these products prior to age 13 and continue the use into adulthood. Hair oils and relaxers have been associated with early periods, which is a breast cancer risk factor or early stage of menarche. Permanent and dark hair dye have been associated with a 45% and 51% increase of breast cancer. Again, another pulse check. How are we feeling? Where are we with this information? So we're, we brought back the emoticon pulse check-in. Just wanted to check in with you all really quickly. Is the information going over your head? Do I need to slow down? Make sure that you provide your questions in the Q&A back so that we can go back so that I can clarify some of the questions that I, to make things a little bit clearer. So I'll give it a few seconds. How are people feeling right now with the information that I just shared related to EDCs and breast cancer risk? Okay, excellent. Thank you guys for that affirmation. Excellent. Okay, we're going to we're going to continue and keep going. So I will go back to full screen. Next question that I have for you all, do cigarettes cause lung cancer? Yes or no? Do cigarettes cause lung cancer? That is the question that I have for you all as we transition. Yes, okay. Thank you, Ms. Thomas, for responding. Yes, yes, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, thank you. Okay, excellent. So I think we can all agree that cigarettes cause lung cancer. That is the consensus. So let's keep going. That is consensus that we're going to go with. Now, a natural response while you're submitting your answer is, why is she asking me about cigarettes and lung cancer when we've been talking about EDCs and breast cancer, which is an excellent question. Once upon a time, not everyone agreed that cigarettes cause lung cancer. And in fact, it's only been 80 years since studies from animal models, animal experiments, chemical analyses, and epidemiology concluded that cigarettes were in fact a cause of lung cancer. And unfortunately, the evidence only one third of individuals, one third of US doctors specifically, up until 1960s, believed this conclusion. So I'm going to keep going. Furthermore, in our communities, some of us operate from the reality that it won't be me. As quoted from one of the black males from our study, there's a little note on every package of cigarettes, harmful to your health, may cause cancer. My mom and dad smoked their whole lives. They never got cancer. I try to believe even if that study showed black hair products cause cancer, you're going to get those men and women that say, well, not everyone is going to get it. So the question that we started with today is, are the chemicals in our hair products increasing my risk for breast cancer? Here's the reality. From a scientific perspective, we don't have the evidence to answer yes to this question like all of us agreed on earlier that cigarettes caused lung cancer. The research is not there yet in order for us to just simply say yes or no. The reality is we do need more data to say with definitive proof that yes and no, it causes cancer, breast cancer specifically. But I'm still going to give you information in the next slides to reduce your risk. And I would encourage you to learn more about this topic. Just because the scientific community has not said yes or no does not mean you can't take the preventative cautions now to reduce your exposure. So I'm going to share some tools to cover number three, eight, and nine on this list that I shared earlier about reducing your risk. 
Number one, new month, touch your boobs. If you like applications, I would recommend downloading the Know Your Lemons application. Self breast exams save people's lives. For a lot of the women whose pictures I shared on the previous lives, that was their, their story. They did self breast exams. They knew what their normal was. And when they felt something that was not supposed to be there, they went to their doctor. For some of us, we don't have doctors. And for those of those, for those individuals in the community, and I want you all to share this information out to people to get screening, the importance of it. If you do not have insurance, please share with them the Every Woman Counts program. This program provides free breast and cervical cancer screening and diagnostic services to California's underserved populations. And they also have an app that you can use to access the providers. Know what's in your product. Environmental uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals are in the products that we use on the daily basis. Turn those products around and really learn more about the chemicals that are in those products. Here are three applications to get you started. I'm personally partial to the Environmental Working Group's Healthy Living application, where each product and ingredient receives a hazard score between one and 10, one low hazard and 10 being high hazard for products as well as the chemicals that are in those products. So I wanted to share my reflections on becoming her before I go into the last phase of this presentation. I wanted to really, and also, share some information with you about the Bench to Community project that I am a part of. Before we get started with that, I wanna ask this question, does representation matter? Go ahead and respond in the chat, yes, no, if it matters. And for a lot of us, we will probably respond with the resounding yes, that representation, whether it is in uh, music, politics, with having the first female vice president, also African-American with Indian um, descent by VP for 2021, Ms. Kamala Harris, like representation does matter. Seeing her picture, seeing Michelle Obama's picture all over, that matters to many of us. For the individuals that you see on the screen for, for me, these are individuals that are a part of my journey for becoming her, becoming the person that I am. And growing to be. And one of the main things that these individuals have in common is they are authentic in their walk, in their own walks of becoming who they are. And one of the things that I want to encourage all of us to be is not only to show up in spaces that we may not necessarily be invited to, but to show up in these, in, in these spaces in our most authentic form. And what do I mean by that? In the words of Brene Brown, authenticity is a collection of choices that we have to make every day. It's about the choice to show up and be real, the choice to be honest, and the choice to let our true selves be seen. I'm fortunate enough to work in an environment with some phenomenal individuals and leaders in cancer health disparities. And even more importantly, my colleagues are real people with desires and skills to make a difference in cancer outcomes for our communities. And it also doesn't hurt that a lot of these folks look like me. It actually matters a lot that a lot of these people look like me. So while representation matters in every aspect of life, it also matters in research. It matters in the individuals that are doing the research and the individuals that are participating in research. So here's your invitation. I'm a part of the Bench to Community Research Project where in partnership with our community advisors and mentorship from Dr. Kittles, Dr. Trevino is um, my collaborator and she's studying the effects of parabens on white and black breast cancer cell lines. Here's the thing, we are essentially one of the first research teams to look at black breast cancer cell lines in the context of paraben concentration exposure. And at the same time, I'm researching the social and behavioral factors that inform hair product selection and use for black women. And what we're hoping to do together with our results is to help to inform EDC reduction interventions for our communities. So I wanna invite you to be a part of what we're doing. And there are three ways that you can do that. Number one is to take and finish our 15 to 30 minute survey. Join us for a salon conversations in 2021. 
This is a platform that was coined by Tanya Fairley, one of our advisors, where you can learn from scientists and also other community members around the science of EDCs and breast cancer risk and really provide strategies for reducing your, your risk and that of your family and community as well. And it's overall, it's a really good time. So I wanna invite you to join us. And lastly, keep in touch with myself and also the project via our social media platforms. So here's some take home messages before we go into Q&A. Number one is to know your normal and check your boobs on a monthly basis. Know what's in your products. And I hope that you will join the Bench to Community family in a future segment with salon conversations or with our social media platforms. With that said, these are my contact information and I'm going to now open it up for questions. I think we have about four minutes for questions. Hi, Ms. Davis. Oh, hi, Dr. Didi. You did an amazing job of giving us very informative information. I want to encourage our attendees, if you have questions, um, please put them in the chat. Um, and as we are waiting for some questions to come in, I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, you, you mentioned how with tobacco, we all agree that like, tobacco does cause um, does cause cancer and there has been some changes with laws and and regulations if from your research um we find you know we have more research that backs up what the harm it does do to us do you think that that will help with the products that they put on the market Yes, definitely. Um, so here's here's the reality. Um, specifically, I'm going to speak from from the black woman perspective. We invest millions and yeah. billions of dollars into this industry, right? So with everything, we have buying power. That's one thing, right? So if you stop using certain products, or if you stop purchasing certain products, then they they have to either figure out why you stop using those products to begin with, right? So marketing research, they're gonna come after you to figure out why you stop using certain things to begin with. So that's one way that we can push the agenda of getting manufacturers to provide clean products is to simply you utilize your buying power. Okay. Um, the second way is to vote, right? So we have to vote in individuals into office that have our best interests at heart. We had Senator Connie Leva join us for um, Salon Conversation Symposium for Bench to Community back in October. And this was a question that was posed to her. How do we get the, the manufacturers to provide clean products to everyone, right? Because what's happening is it's the same manufacturers that will go to the European Union where they have more stringent legislation okay. Okay. and they have 13. So while the United States currently have less than 30, 30 chemicals that are banned, the European Union has over 1300 chemicals. The European wow. Union are banned. So it's the same company, but because we don't have the legislation here in the United States, we are very, very much behind. They get to do whatever they want to do. Right. There is legislation. There is another bill that was passed this year here in California where it adds to the, the list of chemicals that are that manufacturers cannot use here in California. Okay. But that's just here in California. We really need a federal legislation agenda. And the way that you can do that um, with what Senator Colin Leva stated is by letting your representatives know that this is very important to me, it's important to my family, and I need you to be my voice to make sure that these manufacturers listen up. So those are kind of like two ways. Okay. Thank and we can change, yeah, you're welcome. Two ways that we can change the narrative. You have a lot more power than you think you do as a consumer, so utilize it. Okay. I see we do have a question. Um, what are good products for um, for B hair? Oh God. Okay, I'm not a hairstylist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm definitely so. I have four C hair, and God, we we shouldn't even have this conversation about um, different 
<laughs> natural hairstyles. So here's what I recommend. Um, so a lot of the, the, the applications that I showed everyone. Okay. So environmental working group, this is what I would do. Take the products that you're currently using. If it works for your hair, take those products and scan it to see where you are in terms of your hazard score. Like, what are you exposing yourself to? So instead of me telling you what products to buy, because that's I, I don't have a PhD in cosmetology, right? Um, so I can't tell you specifically what products are best for your hair. But what I can tell you is if the products that you're using right now work for your hair, go ahead and use the applications that I suggested. So environmental okay. group is what I typically use. If you are on a desktop skin deep database, if you type that into Google, go ahead and type in that product and then it'll bring up information. One, it'll give the product a score between one and 10. So one is low hazard, 10 means high hazard. Mm -hmm. And then it also breaks down the chemicals that are in those products. I typically stay below five. So five or below, those are the types of products that I'm using on my hair. Um, I know we are like two minutes over time. So if people want to join me in the green room, I can definitely continue to have this conversation. I don't mind sharing the products that I use um, personally, but again, I have 4C hair, quote unquote, okay. so curly, tight, tightly coil, and I'm more than happy to share some of the personal products that I use. But what I would um, recommend is that utilize the applications that I provided and then really begin to educate yourself about what you're exposing your, your body to and specifically what you're exposing your family to because the manufacturers are not gonna make um, the clean beauty choice for you. Can you repeat um, the website that you mentioned on Google? You said Skin Deep? Skin Deep Database. So it's, it's essentially the Skin Deep da Database is the application format for Healthy Living app. So okay. I'm putting it up on the screen right now. People can see it. Are you guys able to see that? Yes, we are. Okay. Okay, perfect. So these are the applications that I would suggest. The middle one is this is um, the skin D database is embedded in that application. So you can take it with you um, to the score. If you uh, if you ever find me at Target, which is where I primarily primarily live, I am okay. always getting products before I purchase them or I do my research at home before I get to the store so that I'm not in the aisle doing all the <laughs> all my research at um, in the hours of, of Target. Okay. So, I think I, oh, that is the correct. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. That is the correct website. It's a skin deep. Love it. Thank you, Dr. Didi, for all of um, your information. Um, we have placed in the chat the links to um, the, pro the, the websites that she mentioned that we can get more information on the products that uh, we actually uh, put in our hair. This is so vital because you're right, we spend millions and, and billions of dollars on hair products. And we really need to be aware of what we're putting in.